Okay, this is going to be about mushrooms. Now you're probably asking yourself, why does he have a picture of Santa Claus and he's talking about mushrooms? By the way, this is my German pincher, Mr. Spock. He's helping here. Uh, the myth of Santa Claus is a melding of two things. The, uh, uh, the real person, St. Nicholas, who, who lived in Turkey, and a uh, yeah, little, little side note on him, he got in a fist fight at the Council of Nicaea over the Arian heresy, but then he was uh, bound as uh, after the Council of Nicaea and, and as the Catholic Church would want to do to uh, already existing pagan myths. So uh, we're going to go back to him in a little while, but let's, this is mainly about mushrooms. So we'll go back to Santa Claus here anyway, just keep that in the back of your head. So there's about 5.1 million different species of mushrooms. Uh, keep this in mind in funguses. 50% are inedible. 25% are tasteless, meaning you can eat them, they don't taste anything. 20% cause sickness. 4% are tasty, 1% can kill you. And this is the one that kills the most people. It's called the death cap, Amanita philandias. And it will kill you fast. So let's go over a little bit of, of what makes up a mushroom. There's a bulb, a stem, the ring where the cap comes and then eventually it initially covers it and as this grows it breaks. That's what's left over of it. The gills on the bottom, uh, the edge or margin, the scales and then the cap itself. Now mushrooms, this is the stuff that's above ground on the mushrooms. Mushrooms can have you know just this the part you're seeing here but then they can go down underneath the ground and they can put tendrils everywhere and then they'll pop up there's little mushrooms here and little mushrooms there but it's actually the same organism they move around a lot so uh and here's a uh the heaviest fungus above ground was found on this tree here uh let me check this out here so anyway you can do all kinds of stuff with mushrooms you can uh, they use them to make stonewashed jeans they use them for uh, to make uh, you know wine alcohol penicillin uh, I was doing a little bit many of y'all know I do a little bit of a lab work for the government uh, give people some time off and so I can I'm actually talking about this because the study's over and it's already been published but you can make uh, uh, a plastic substitute with mushrooms and uh, this was the study was actually uh, done uh, it was a five-year study it's just been completed now but uh, it uh, the five years ago oil was really expensive and uh, you know it was thought it was a, a a, fo a true fossil fuel it's still called a fossil fuel but it's a naturally occurring mineral in the crust I mean uh, Hubbard's Peak is a lie uh, so so anyway let's talk a little bit more about about mushrooms so the the heaviest mushroom of all time is in a forest in Michigan and it covers 37 acres believe it or not and it's uh it weighs about 200 tons. It's the same organism. Now, the largest organism on the planet is a fungus that lives in a forest in Oregon. And it covers 2,200 acres. Uh, 2,200 acres. And it's the same organism. And it, like I said, these things come up You'll see just a little cap here, but then they'll go down underneath ground and pop up another one here and here and here. Well, how can this one be 37 acres and, and weigh 200 tons and this one cover 22,000 uh, acres and not be the heaviest? Well, this one, uh, so let's draw some little trees here, some happy trees as, and let's draw some happy trees over here. So this one, does have caps here and there but it's got more tendrils growing in other words if you were to look at it from above it would be spread out 
all around the forest. It would have long stringy tendrils and every once in a while there'd be a cap pop up here, one here, one here, one here. But it looked more like a spider web. Uh, and, and it was thick. Uh, these are thick. These, these, this one goes down about a foot everywhere along the spider web. And it's more concentrated. So it's a wider swath. It still looks like a spider web. Uh, when you say it co covers 37 acres, that's, that's the uh, outside boundaries here. But this one's deep and wide. And the one that covers the 22,000 acres is shallow and way more spread out. And doesn't go down near as deep. So this one looks, you know, this one covers way more area. Uh, but it's, 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 it's way more spread out. Uh, and uh, anyway, so let's go back to the Santa Claus portion of this. So for a long, long time, uh, the, uh, all along the, the, the part of the Northern Hemisphere, and I'll just try to draw, there's Denmark and jolly old England and Ireland all along this this about this parallel here around here it was thought for hundreds of years that mushrooms were the fruiting body of, of uh, pine trees because you find them under pine trees and uh, the shaman uh, would dress in red and white in these areas because the hallucinogen of choice for him was Amanita muscalera, or fly agaric. It's also, it's Amanita muscalera. 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 It's also known as fly agaric. And this is the one that the Vikings would go berserk on. They would get, wor they would get worked up and they would take these uh, hallucinogens in the mushrooms and they would go crazy and, and get in a fighting, fighting stance. Well, what does that have to do with Santa Claus? Well, like I said, the, uh, the hallucinogen of choice around the world, the shaman would wear whatever color it was. So if you were uh, taking Awanaska down in South America, you'd be wearing purple and, and green because that's what the plant looks like. So the shaman during the summer would go pick the mushrooms that were underneath the pine trees. And he would pick a central location and, and put the mushrooms that he picked on these trees so they would dry out, concentrate, and lessen the weight. So he could put them in his bag. Now what he would do is during the winter, he would uh, uh, he would go from house to house 